Here's geometry practice 1-1, patterns and inductive reasoning. So new vocab, inductive. Well, this means that you're going to find a pattern and predict the next term. That makes it inductive reasoning. So the other term that you've been introduced to in chapter two is uh, deductive reasoning. And that is finding the missing term. So for this, section, we just need to look at the pattern and figure out what comes next. When you get to the deductive reasoning, we're going to say, I know this, I know this, therefore I must have this new conclusion. So here we go. First we find a pattern, then we show the next two terms. Well, okay, how do I get from 17 to 23? Hmm, how about, um, let's see, add 6. So then from 23 to 29, oh, that's also adding 6. And from 29 to 35, that's adding 6. And from 35 to 41, again, with the adding 6. So the pattern is add 6, and that gives you your next term. So the next two terms will be 47 and 53. Here, it's not so much of a mm, multiplication or division or addition thing, it's uh, sort of just adding a zero in between the ones. So I got 1.01, 1.001, 1 1.0001. So now I just need to have four zeros. One, two, three, four. Whoa. <laughs> four zeros, and then the next term will have five zeros. 1.1, 1 .1. sorry, 1.1, 2, 3, 4, five zeros than the one. How about this? From 12 to 14, oh, I get it. I add two. From 14 to 18, ooh, that's adding four. 18 to 24, oh, that's adding six. Adding eight. So this next term, do you see the pattern? We're adding even numbers. So that means the next term would be 42. And then to get to that last term, I'll have, I'll have to add 12, and that makes my final term 54. Here, how do we get from 2 to negative 4? Well, let's see, we could take away 6, but then from negative 4 to positive 8, that's adding 12. That's sort of weird. And then from positive 8 to negative 16, that's subtracting 24. So I could look at it like that, or... What if we use, instead of addition and subtraction, what about some multiplication? Because you see this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 16, 32. I'm sorry, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So that's actually multiplying by 2 every time. But what about that negative? Well, watch this. What if we do 2 times negative 2? I get negative 4. What's four, negative 4 times negative 2? Ho, ho, positive 8. What's positive 8 times negative 2? Yep, negative 16. Negative 16 times negative 2 gets me positive again, and 32. So, to continue the pattern of we're multiplying by negative 2, 32 times negative 2 would be negative 64, and then negative 64 times negative 2 would be positive 128. How about this? 1 to 2. Uh, 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Hey, nice. 4 times 2 is not 7. So multiplying, that's not the pattern. Let's check for a difference thing. Well, 1 to 2, that's a difference of 1. 2 to 4 is a difference of 2. 4 to 7 is a difference of 3. 7 to 11 is a difference of 4. 11 to 16, difference of 5. So this should be a difference of 6, which means I need 22. And then to the next term should be a difference of 7. So that means I need 29. On this one, I've got 32, 48, 56, 60, 62, 63. So the numbers are getting sort of less far apart. Well, this would be a difference of 16. This is a difference of 8. This is a difference of 4. Ooh, do you see a pattern here? So 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. I'm dividing this difference by 2 every time. 
and then writing whatever that answer is. So the difference of 1, divide that by 2 is a half. So now I'm at 63 and a half is my next term. So from here, these are all of the differences. So that's 1 half, and then the next difference would be half again, so 1 fourth, which makes my final term 63, and then I do 63 and a half plus the 1 fourth, makes it 63 and 3 fourths, because I already have 63 and a half, and I just need to add on a little bit more. What are two ways to continue the pattern? Well, if I've got a 1 and a 1, maybe I've got a 2 and a 2. Or you could use some addition here. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 would be 3. So these are not two terms. These are two different ways to continue this pattern. 48, 49, 50, 51. Is there any other way that you could continue that pattern? Hmm. Well, here's a difference of 1. This is a difference of 1. Um... I don't know. What did you come up with? Continuing on, number 9. 2, 4, we can continue it with a 6. Or we could say we're multiplying by 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 could be 8. Now, what happens after you get through all of the alphabet? What should you do next? Well, you could do 2 A's. So you got AA, and then maybe BB. Or maybe you start with numbers. Or maybe you start with numbers and letters. So now here's actually a third way. You could have a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, etc. D, E, F, G is one way to do it. Are there any other things you can do here? Yeah, you could actually repeat the pattern. You could go D, E, F again. Does that help you find another answer for number 8? And now here, A to Z, okay, well then B, maybe B to Y. So we're getting the first and the last, the second and the second and last. Or maybe it's as simple as A, Z, B, Z, C, Z, etc. Now, what would be the next figure in each of these? Triangle, square, pentagon, oh. yep, hexagon because this is three sides, four sides, five sides, six sides. The easiest way to draw a hexagon is parallel top and the bottom, and then a little greater than symbol on either side. How about this? We have a circle with one slice, with two slices, with four slices. So then this next one should have eight slices. So here are one, two, three, four, and now I need to do four more. One, two, three, four. And how about this? 90 to 135, that means I've added 45, which is half of that. And then I get 135 to 157.5, which is adding 22 and a half, which was half of that. So let's do half of this should be 11.25 and add that here 168.75 and now seven people meet and shake hands well I'm going to draw these seven people in a little circle one two three four five six seven so now this guy will We'll pretend it's all guys here. <laughs> and this guy shakes hands with number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, and number seven. But when it's number two's turn to shake hands with number one, that's already happened. So we don't have to count that again. So let's just count the, each of the new lines that I draw. So one shakes hands with two. That's one. One handshake. Two handshakes. Three handshakes. Four handshakes. Five handshakes. Six handshakes. So with seven people, the first guy does six handshakes. Now it's the second guy's turn. He's already shaken hands with number one, so he has to go with number two, two to three. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Do you see a pattern? 
Now it's number three's turn to shake hands, but he's already shaken hands with number one, and he's already shaken hands with number two. So that means he doesn't shake hands with himself, so he'll keep going with number four. One, two, three, four. And yep, you guessed it. <coughs> number four does three handshakes. One, two, three. Number five only does two handshakes. And number six, he's already shaken hands with everybody except number seven. So there's one handshake. So what's six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one? So now, using inductive reasoning, write a formula for the number of handshakes if the number of people is n. So we actually were doing n take away 1. So we had 7 people shaking hands, but we started with 6. Uh, so that's actually whatever number of people you have, it's the number of handshakes. And then we did... So n minus 1 in our case would be 7 minus 1 is 6, plus 7, oops, I wrote that wrong, 7 minus 2 is the 5, and then we add the number of handshakes minus 3, which would be 4, n minus 4, and so then we keep going, but how many terms do we know that we have? Well, we should end up with all the way down to n minus 1 minus n. So if we add these all up, a fancy way to put it would be, um, well, you know what? That's good enough for now. Uh, let's keep going. Number 18, Fibonacci sequence is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. So what happens here is that we add 1 and 1. That gives us 2. We add 1 and 2. That gives us 3. 2 and 3 gives us 5. 3 and 5 gives us 8. 5 and 8 gives us 13. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 terms. Well, we need the ninth one. So if this is 7, here's 8 and 9. How do we do this? 8 plus 13, that's 21. 13 plus 21 is 34. So this is the ninth term. Now, let's look at the ratios of one term to the next. 1 to 1, those are the first two terms. Next two terms are 1 to 2. Next term is 2 to 3. Next term is 3 to 5. Next term is 5 to 8. Next two terms, 8 to 13. Uh, is there a pattern here? Well, you have to use your calculator and enter each of these, and you'll see that there's sort of a pattern evolving here where you end up with 1.5, 0 0.666, 0 0.625, 0 0.615, 0 0.619, 0 0.617. And so as these get closer and closer to the same number, you actually end up with, uh, if you kept going for 100 terms, you get really close to this decimal, 0.618. And that is so cool because that is actually part of the golden ratio. So Mr. Fibonacci struck something very interesting here um, because we say the golden ratio is either 1.618 or 0.618, which is also very interesting because you can do 1 over 0.618 and you get 1.618. And you can do 1 over 1.618, and you get 0.618. So, very cool number there. Then lastly, we list the first eight terms of the sequence that we get when we find the differences of the terms in the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so we're going to do subtraction. 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus 1, that's 1. <coughs> 3 minus 2, 1. 5 minus 3, 2. 8 minus 5, hmm, 13 minus 8, ooh, 21 take away 13, that's 8, 34 take away 21, yep, 13. So, Fibonacci sequence can be derived from the Fibonacci sequence. Ta-da! All done.